Hi, everybody. Uh, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this uh, Sunday evening uh, where I am. It's uh, just coming up on 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time on uh, Sunday, February 25th, um, which uh, is now uh, coming up on midnight uh, London time, uh, zero Z Greenwich. And uh, we've got <clears throat> uh, the weekend wet weather system is now pretty much done with <clears throat> for my area and places nearby. So the next real focus of attention is going to be late this week. And uh, we've, we've got this uh, blocking pattern that has developed uh, that is really front and center. And it is the driver behind the uh, weather events that are going on in Europe and the weather events that are going to be going on in the, in the um, United States, but particularly in the eastern part of the United States. And since I seem to have a <clears throat> crowd from the UK tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about you folks first uh, because uh, I don't want to keep you up too past your bedtimes. So uh, we'll start with what uh, the models are saying. And, and if you think back uh, over the last week, we've been spending a lot of time talking about this uh, east Coast block, this east based block that is, that initially developed uh, near Scandinavia, extending all along the north coast of Russia over the Arctic and then pushing over into uh, eastern Siberia. That has been the driver for the cold air that has built up uh, from Siberia and is been, has been spreading westward. And, and in fact, just to review, uh, we can. Uh, Look at this in terms of the uh, temperature anomalies, in other words, below and above normal temperatures. And uh, this is actually for Wednesday, but I'll start it back. We can go back uh, three days so we can at least get a perspective of where it is. And it, it wasn't that, at least initially, uh, it wasn't uh, especially warm across Europe. Uh, we, we did see a trend to colder than average temperatures. But if you watch the bright purple area back into east from Eastern Europe on up into uh, Russia, uh, that is the bitter cold air. And over time, that is what's pushing back westward. And you can see how it basically envelopes uh, just about all of Europe uh, from uh, northernmost Spain uh, all the way up north and east of there. So, you know, some small pockets in southern Spain where the average temperatures are kind of uh, neutral. But <clears throat> what I want you to, got, to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> at this point, is if you look where Spain and Portugal is, uh, you're going to start, I'm going to move this forward. This is on Wednesday. You're going to start to see a bulge of above normal temperatures. And you can see that there moving into southern France. This is in response to an Atlantic storm that's tracking just offshore. So on the eastern side, you basically get a warm front that pushes up. So south of that front, you'll have warmer than average air or what we call the warm sector. But it's moving into this very, very cold air that is covering uh, the British Isles, uh, the just about all of uh, northwestern Europe, uh, and, of course, uh, down into Germany, Netherlands, and northeastern France at this point because of where the low is. But you, you see how that above, that, that, that kind of, that comma shape there? That is actually a reflection of the circulation of the um, storm system we're talking about, um, that, that curl uh, there, that swirl of above normal temperatures. That is a tight, uh, little tight storm that is moving up northward into the cold air. That is uh, enveloped across the top. If you want to look at it from the standpoint of what this looks like in the upper atmosphere, uh, as far as uh, the overall jet stream pattern is concerned, it's pretty complex. But uh, remember that winds blow clockwise around highs and counterclockwise around low. So if we look at the upper atmosphere here, you have this large upper air storm. This is for Tuesday sitting over uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, northeastern uh, northeastern um, Italy. There's an upper low there. So if you follow the upper winds and go up toward uh, Norway and Sweden and Finland, uh, you've got the lines going basically from east to west. That is underneath the blocking high that is up now at this point near Greenland. So the upper air winds are all blowing 
from the east. So weather system, the air, your air is coming in from the east and sweeping across the British Isles. Now, as we go through time, uh, you'll notice there's energy that kind of concentrates itself off the coast of England and a trough that's uh, extending down from that uh, to just east of Portugal that's lifting up and around. So that's your storm system that is coming up for the end of the week. Now, how does this look at the surface? Well, uh, I want to bring it back. We'll come back to um, tonight. Actually, you can see the edge of that blocking high uh, center just north of Iceland here. <clears throat> and that north, north that northeasterly flow in the upper atmosphere uh, pulling that cold air and then driving it southward into uh, France and down into Italy. But when we look at this from the standpoint of the surface map, um, what's happening is... Uh, at least from the standpoint of weather, actual weather going on, there really isn't too much happening at the moment. Uh, but over time, as you get into Monday night and Tuesday, you can see this blue area here. You start to get those winds coming in from off the North Sea. So you're going to get some streamers there on Tuesday. Uh, and there's still quite a bit of activity going into Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. Then a bit of a break. Now you can see the low. Let me just back it up. You see there's a 9, I believe I can't read that. Is that a 980 low? Yes. You have a 980 low sitting east of Portugal. You still have this cold flow, high pressure, very strong high pressure sitting over Norway and Sweden, uh, keeping an easterly flow of very cold air uh, moving over the British Isles. And there's your low center east of France, uh, and it intensifies down to a 971. Uh, looks like it's approaching Southern Ireland. Uh, this is now for Thursday afternoon. And there you can see this band of heavy snow that it develops and actually brings right over Ireland. Ireland. The models have been kind of trending the storm a little bit further to the west. Now, that has, the way I'm seeing it, that has, um, that's going to have implications in terms of, of, of the cold air in that the cold air may wind up being able to hang on for a longer period of time than it otherwise would. In other words, if you took this low center and brought it, say, straight over uh, the English Channel and on up through England, um, I would tend to think that that might bring some mild, warmer air up eventually and change some of that snow over to rain. But uh, with the track showing fur a little bit further to the west and also intensifies into quite the uh, offshore powerhouse here, um, you're going to have some cold air that's going to get pinned down uh, into uh, England for a longer period of time. So uh, I, I think that uh, this is basically a colder solution uh, as far as as far as I can see. Um, the UK Met Office may argue differently, and I would defer to them because you know they have far more knowledge of your local climate than I do. But it would seem to me that this is a bullish development as far as um, you know snowfall is concerned. And when we uh, put the uh, GFS snowfall forecast map up this is um through saturday morning I'll, I'll put in one more period and go into saturday afternoon um most of southern england looks like it's under uh, eight centimeters here but then you start to get um you know you start to go through look at wales i mean we're talking you know some 15 20 centimeter amounts or higher you start to get into those bigger amounts as, as you go north, and, and, and it tails off in some spots. You're never going to get it exact, by the way, in terms of what the model analysis is uh, and what the model forecast is. But uh, it certainly says to me that an average of 10 to 20 centimeter snowfall through much of the British Isles will be commonplace. And there will be also some snows across uh, part of France and, um, and also in Italy uh, looking especially active over the next five days. So um, definitely a wintertime pattern and uh, definitely one that's coming at the very end of February and the beginning of March. Uh, March known to be a very crazy month, uh, I guess, on both sides of, uh, of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, your block is playing out in your direction. The block is also playing out uh, for the northeastern part of the United States. Now, let me just uh, point this out, folks. Just to be clear, okay, um, there are, you know, people are, I, it was brought up in the conversation before we started, people calling the block a bust, okay, 
And I think that's really in reference to the fact that, you know, perhaps it's not going to bring about uh, the um, snowstorm that some of these snow weenies were looking for. And that makes total, you know, okay, so that's their perspective and I get it. But um, you look at this map, this is the uh, upper air jet stream map, uh, 500 millibars, roughly 18,000 feet showing the upper air flow. Um, that is what you're seeing between Greenland and Labrador, that very, uh, that closed off powerful upper high uh, with um, anomalies that are uh, way above normal. Okay. That's not a bust. All right. The block is real. The block is there just because you didn't get the outcome you wanted um, doesn't mean that it didn't happen. OK, and that it's not happening. Uh, the uh, problem is not the block. Uh, if, if you were looking for a snowstorm, the problem remains the Pacific uh, in that you still have troughing in the West and the absence of ridging up the West Coast. So there really isn't a, a, a much of a polar connection in order to, to, to bring down colder air. Uh, so, you know, you're dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with in terms of colder air. And this time of year or at the beginning of March, uh, it's it can it becomes problematic. But that doesn't mean that the block was a, quote, bust. You're going to wind up, uh, I think, when this is all said and done with a fairly powerful nor'easter. So as you watch the evolution of all this, of course, starting back um, over the earlier in the weekend where we still had this ridge in the east, uh, of the United States. And of course, now that ridge is flattening out and breaking down. And as the block moves southward, but here's the problem. All right. Here's, here's among other problems. Here's another issue. And that is the energy with the system for the end of the week is into the plain states and almost to the middle Mississippi River by Wednesday evening. The block is still building southward. So it, 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 there is room and for this system to try to lift up northeast toward the Great Lakes, which is what it would like would would normally try to do, until it gets uh, until the block gets in the way. Now, if the block builds faster, then you will wind up with a surface system that will probably come further south. In fact, models from my viewing looked like they were a shade further south overall today. So it might be signaling that the block is becoming. Um, more important a bit faster, but uh, you can see it here at this point now, the block is exerting its influence. The upper air system, instead of lifting up <clears throat> to the northeast, it can't because that big upper eye is in the way, is pushing eastward <clears throat> toward the coast. And as a result, <clears throat> you're going to have low pressure that's going to develop and uh, head up toward the, uh, uh, the northern areas of the Ohio Valley and then redevelop right along the coast, probably near the Delaware coast, and the second area is going to completely take over. So uh, we'll show you how it plays out on the surface because that's where, um, you know, clearly all of us live here on the surface and not up at 18,000 feet. So um, the, the uh, map will probably illustrate this a bit better. And one of the things that the uh, late afternoon run of the GFS did and the European had it today to some extent, is that it is at least it, it seems to be trying <clears throat> to drain down cold air from the north um, as the coastal storm gets going. So uh, here we have the primary low, and you see it here. It's actually quite wrapped up into uh, northern Illinois. Um, the height of the north is 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 yet to uh, exert its influence in a big way here. It's beginning to try to do that. Because that surface low in northern Illinois starts to stretch east and east-southeast. You see how the isobars start to, every, the, the system is basically getting stretched out toward the Atlantic coast. So all your pressure falls are going to be occurring off the Virginia-Delaware coast. By uh, Thursday evening, the low, the primary low from northern Illinois moves straight east into northeastern Ohio and you're getting big pressure falls off the Delaware coast. By Friday morning, there's your, your secondary low sitting near Cape May, New Jersey, uh, right in Delaware Bay. Now, now the, <clears throat> the, um, the primary low would need to be 
further south. So get that secondary to develop further south. And, and the only way that happens is if the height, the upper height of the north and a surface height that you can't see on this map here, if that started pressing down faster and forced the redevelopment further south. That's that's how you would get this would be more snow around here than, than anything else. And you start to see the colder air, at least on this model run, that begins to drain into parts of upstate New York and in through uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. And as the low, the coastal low, starts to really wrap up along the New Jersey coast, you're talking about a, a, a big rain event for southern New England and southeastern New England in particular. Um, heavy rains going back into eastern Pennsylvania. But then on the northern fringe of that, um, maybe a bit more, let's fringe might be um, probably not the right word, but it looks like from I-90 north, uh, you start to see most of that area changing over to snow, particularly in elevation-driven areas. And then it's all snow when we get to Friday afternoon. The surface low at this point looks like it's southeast of uh, Montauk or south of Nantucket. There's another low center that's that's shown here uh, southeast of the New Jersey coast. So it's a, a, a kind of complex. Uh, that, because of the blocking, starts to move southeastward. And colder air starts to get involved into the circulation. But... The problem is at this point, uh, you're going to start to see the moisture field get, wind, wind down as the surface low pulls southeastward. So the late afternoon model run would argue for a change to snow toward the end for coastal areas. But you know what? I'm not, ga I'm not going to lose any sleep over this uh, because this is going to this if it comes would come at the end anyhow. But uh, the GFS late this afternoon is very much like the European um, and I'll, I'll match it up. So here's the uh, the late this afternoon GFS. Uh, the European, for the same time frame earlier today, kind of uh, went in the same direction in terms of structure and depth. You can see it there. It's got a 979 low southeast of Long Island, completely wrapped up. The upper air feature, the colors there reflect the upper air jet stream. So you have a, 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 a fairly well-defined upper air storm that's virtu sitting virtually right on top of it. The system looks almost vertical. Um, this is where the dynamics of the system that you could wind up with some dynamic cooling, but you know it's got work to do here on the coast. Uh, if we put up the uh, the temperatures at the higher levels of the atmosphere, I'm going to go up to 5,000 feet. You know it is it, it's cold or getting colder, but uh, I, I don't think it's cold enough. Uh, you, you know I really would have felt more comfortable. You know if you were looking for snow. You want to see the darker blue isotherms here that represent, you know, minus 10 degrees at 5,000 feet, um, much closer to the coast. I mean, it is showing, you know, temperatures at that level at around minus two to minus five, which would be, um, you know, cold enough. So, you know, I, I guess I want to be a little cautious here in the subsequent runs to see what these temperature trends are going to be with this um, with this system. But for now, it's looking for the most part for areas in, in, in the coastal cities. Um, uh, it is going to be rain. It's going to be uh, perhaps a substantial rain. By the way, this opens up another problem uh, in the fact that the uh, we've had a number of uh, soaking rain events in the last uh, several weeks. Uh, the ground is pretty saturated at this point. It won't be doing much for the next three days. However, when we um, look at the total rainfall that the model is forecasting here, uh, you can uh, the whitish areas, that's all two to three or four inch rainfalls that are being indicated. Um, in fact, I, I got I to gotta push it back. I got to push it out into Saturday evening. Look at the rainfall amounts that it's producing for southeastern New England on the order of, of uh, three to five inch rainfalls there, even touching parts of eastern Long Island and uh, to the west, every bit of two to three inches in a lot of places, a uh, pocket of two to three inch plus rains in central Pennsylvania over northern New Jersey and northeastern Pennsylvania and uh, on up through uh, upstate New York, up the Hudson Valley. And some of that snow, by the way, so uh, this is this is where we're way too early to figure this out. The European had most of its snow uh, north of uh, I-90, I would kind of tend to agree with that. Actually, the GFS, you know, if you want to look at this and, and say that it's all overdone, we'll, we'll uh, try the positive. Let's do the positive change snowfall because I think that might give us a, a better view. Uh, um, and you can see how with the positive change, which is supposed to account for for melting, 
Oh, wait, let me hold on. Let me just make sure I got the right map before I speak. Um, that's uh, see, is that the total? Okay, so this is positive snow growth. So actually, even the positive snow growth map does, you know, show some pretty substantial amounts once you go well inland. But notice, doesn't get it going down to the coastline. Uh, but you go up uh, the Hudson Valley, have out halfway up, uh, you, then you start to get into the Catskills. And uh, there's, you know, with elevation driven snows, I'm sure there are going to be areas that are going to wind up with a foot plus in the mountains as you go through upstate New York. And uh, the snow's also substantial in the mountains of Vermont and New Hampshire. So uh, this could be um, a typical early March snow for the inland areas where you have just a limited amount of cold air to work with, but that elevation is going to be uh, the driver, even bring some of that into northeastern Pennsylvania. So uh, this is going to be, um, you know, I, I think I think this is going to be a, a fairly sizable nor'easter in terms of its impact to coastal areas. Uh, the other thing to remember is that we've got a full moon at the end of this week. So this, uh, this system is going to coincide with the full moon. And that means uh, th that we are going to have, uh, at the very least, I would think that we will have moderate coastal flooding uh, uh, throughout much of this area, if not more than that, um, for be beginning on Thursday and lasting uh, into the high tides on Saturday. A lot's going to depend on, you know, the actual position of the surface low in terms of the impact uh, because of the fact that the coastal redevelopment right now by the models happening very close to or just south of New York City. So if this were to shift a little bit further to the south, that's going to mean uh, uh, a, that, that will seriously impact and change the coastal flooding profile uh, that would uh, set up with, with a system like this for um, the end of this week and into next weekend. So uh, definitely a lot going on on both sides of the Atlantic, all being caused by this blocking pattern. And once again, remember... The pattern change you want and the pattern change you get are not the same thing, okay? Um, you can wish cast all you want. The blocking is, as, as with as so many things in weather that you look at, there is no uh, one driver. There is no one thing that, um, you know, is the answer to all your forecast questions, particularly five days um, in advance. Uh, Reaver 501 west of the Hudson. Yeah, I think they could. Certainly the hill towns west of Albany, this might be the type of storm where those areas uh, do exceptionally well uh, in terms of um, snowfall. How much rain has fallen in February on Long Island this year? Uh, let me just, I can give that a quick check. Meanwhile, by the way, I was looking at temperatures around in, in Europe, uh, the UK, uh, at uh, 31 right now in London, and I think it was 23 in Berlin. It was 12, uh, 17, or I think it was 17 in Krakow in Poland, and Paris I believe was 29. Okay, so the rainfall we'll use Islip because well, it's the only one I got. Um, but uh, Islip's rainfall since uh, January 1st. Um, we are running 3.46 inches above average, just to give you perspective. So since January 1st, and this is through today, 9.95 um, inches. So 10 inches of rain for the month. The norm, the average uh, is 6.49. So we're three and a half inches above average at Islip. Uh, snowfall right now um, is running well. Islip's average is snowfall numbers are 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 just wrong uh, because there's a lot of missing data from years ago. Uh, but the uh, snowfall uh, for the season so far is 29.4. I live uh, two miles northeast of Islip, and the snowfall difference in those two miles is huge. So, uh, uh, you know, especially in events where we have snow to rain events. Uh, I have 30, I, I am for those two miles, my seasonal snowfall is actually at 35.2 versus Islip's 29.4. So uh, I've had 5.8 inches more snow here than two miles south of me. Um, I know that may sound weird, but 
trust me, I'm, 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 it's true. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Big Al, I don't think it's possible to have an all, an all snow event for New York City. It's not going to be cold enough ahead of it. I think the best you could hope for if you want snow is that if, if the low is a little bit further south that you could get cold air to drain in uh, uh, to, on, on, on the backside and that you might see a changeover to snow Friday night into early Saturday. I wouldn't rule it out. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, hang my hat on that at this stage of the game because we're still too far out into the long range. The broad question, I think, of a storm developing where it is, is going to happen. All the models have it uh, to one form or another, and they all seem to be coming closer to this idea that uh, this storm is going to have um, uh, intensity uh, working in, it, in its favor. Uh, F uh, Fabian uh, Bar Bartalos, good to see you here. Um, foggy day in Virginia after the rains from this morning. Yeah, it was not up, not pretty up here. We barely got out of the low 40s, and it rained just about all day long. Um, let's see. Ryan Ford. Um, uh, if the storm system for later this week develops right on top of New Jersey, could we see some tropical storm force winds or potentially even stronger? Uh, I would rule out the potentially even stronger part. Could, are we going to see gales from it? I would think so. Um, why don't we wait and see where the low actually develops? Uh, but, um, you know, I would I would, I would, would certainly tend to think we're going to have gales out of this. So that's right there. That's 30 to 40 with probably some gusts of 50 along the coast. Would not surprise me. Uh, a lot depends on how the secondary develops and, and where it develops. And is it going to be one low? Is it two lows? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Tom Adams, the last time we had a negative NAO and a positive PNA, you probably have to go back to the, the winter of 2010, 2011, where I think that was the case pretty much from the end of November to the uh, end of the middle of January. So, uh, it, it was, a it was a long period where you had both the NAO and the PNA positive, uh, but I'm doing that off the top of my head. I, I, I could be wrong. Um, actually... Actually, uh, in January, for the uh, snowstorm of January 4th, uh, for all of about two days, you had a positive PNA, Pacific North America Index, and a negative NAO and a negative EPO all at the same time. Okay, so I don't know if you're asking me asking the question. You know, if, if you're talking about a meaningful combination you probably have to go to back to 2010 2011 because that lasted like that for weeks if you're talking about um the last time it happened well it probably happens quite a bit it's just that you may or may not notice it depending on what what the weather is going on but if you're tying it to a weather event you can go back to um to january to Jan the january 4th storm um yes very good william huber Giants want to give a five-year contract to a blocking pattern. Can you blame them after the season they had? Um, what was the pattern like in early March last year that D.C. got three clippers and a big storm? Uh, Joshua Penn. I am trying to rack my brain out. I remember I remember the pattern. In, I remember in March, last year, the March, March pattern turned colder. Um, uh, more consistently colder, and if I remember correctly, it was uh, negative. Probably there was a negative NAO, and you know a positive, uh, probably a positive PNA or a negative EPO, something like that. I ha I would have to go back and check, but um, I don't remember the specific setups in terms. I seem to. You know, my, 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 my brain is telling the NAO part of it may have gone negative during that time, but not to the extreme, by the way, of what we're seeing here. You know, that's a good time, I think, to bring up the teleconnections um, so that you can, you, you know, what we're seeing here in terms of the upper air structure. Of course, we'll see it if I can find the graphic, uh, which has eluded me now. So it looks like it's disappeared. Uh, but trust me on this, the, um, the uh, PNA is very much in an off-the-wall position. Unfortunately, I may have uh, accidentally erased it. So, um, but uh, the NAO goes completely off the wall this week. It's already turning, uh, diving uh, at the moment, and it will continue to do so as it 
is reflecting that the ra the uh, rapid building of that upper high and that blocking high. Uh, uh, and it, by the way, it stays negative, although not off the wall negative, but it does stay negative right through the next two weeks. The uh, PNA spikes up to neutral and positive, goes slightly positive, then starts to go a little negative toward the very end. And the EPO is kind of back and forth. I think it was shown, showing it to go negative toward the end of the period, but I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting that part of the uh, my memory um, uh, right. Let me just, I, could, I guess I could pull, uh, pull it up on the outside. And uh, actually the EPO goes, is, is positive right now, goes neutral. During this whole nor'easter event, neutral, slightly negative, and then goes positive again uh, toward the uh, latter part of the period, which would be after March 7th. That NAO is off is already at a strong negative reading today. It goes off the wall over the next three days as it crashes and then starts to gradually rise up. Uh, but it's still negative as we get toward uh, the end of the period, which right now would be um, March March 11th. Um, Shelly Man Studios wants one last burst of winter before spring. You know what? There's enough variability in the month of March normally that um, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. Okay. And Ghost in the Nutshell, blocks are overrated is correct. That is the, you know, and I, I have said I have said this repeatedly over the winter time. Uh, blocking and that negative NAO is vastly overstated and vastly overrated. You can see here how we have this unprecedented block uh, developing. And yet uh, at the same time, uh, you, you know, you're, you're sitting around saying, well, why aren't we, you know, getting this, that or the other thing? Well, again, you know, the Pacific is a mess uh, and remains a mess with a trough in the West. You, you can't, you know, it's not just the block. It's everything else that's going on around it. And you know, people are not grasping that part of the, you know, of that part of this. Uh, they're not important. OK, the block F overall, when it's not there, you think you want it. But you know what? We've gotten most of our snows over the last number of years with the absence of the NAO. And some of them have been substantial. So you don't need it. Um, and in terms of a, a big storm, no 50-50 low, Luis. Uh, IDGAF. Well, um, as far as the snowstorm for the uh, for the I ninety five cities, that that would be correct. It may not. It's not necessarily correct for the inland spots. Uh, and also, not having the fifty fifty low doesn't mean you can't have a nor'easter. And that's where we're going here with this. This is going to be a nor'easter with the primary focus is going to be wind, rain, and coastal flooding, and not necessarily snow, unless you're in the elevated areas in uh, upstate New York or um, up in New England. That's correct. The January 4th storm brought the, the only brought the NAO because of the geographic definition of the index and not because there was blocking. Correct. And, and you know, that's the other thing. Um, the, 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 that, that's, that's, that's the other thing. The negative NAO, um, you got to you got to see what it's being caused by. Um, and it was caused by part of the equation of figuring out, you know, it's basically you're, fig you're you're calculating a value based on the pressure changes going on over um, a, a couple of geographic regions, and the the North Atlantic Oscillation is not just what goes on up uh, in the Northeast Atlantic, uh, but it also encompasses the area uh, along uh, be 40 to 50 north. I, I, in fact, why don't I just tell you exactly what it is? Okay, so. Uh, let, instead of trying to remember it off the top of my head. So it's basically, uh, you're looking at pressure changes between 35 degrees north and 45 degrees north, between 70 west and 10 west. So virtually the entire mid-latitudes of the Atlantic. And you're combining that with the pressure changes that go on from 55 north to 70 north and from 70 west to 10 west. So basically uh, the entire northern part of the Atlantic. So the second part of the, that equation you want you know, uh, increasing high pressure. And the uh, first part of that would be um, lower pressure. You want lower pressure in the southern latitudes and higher pressure in the northern latitudes. And I uh, guess the uh, negative NAO was not being driven by any kind of higher pressure in the higher latitudes. 
uh, back on January 4th, but it was driven by the depth of that superstorm that formed along the East Coast where pressures got down into the high 950 millibars. Uh, so uh, there, that's where your driver was for the negative NAO. And it's important to see, to look at where that's coming from. That's why this one, this is all high pressure driven. This is, this is high pressure driven in the northern latitudes and low pressure driven in the mid latitudes. Um, you've got both of those things working here, which is creating the blocking pattern. All right. So, um, you know, this is this is a blocking pattern. OK. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's important to the uh, what is going on both in the European side and in the Atlantic side. But uh, again, it is not the end all answer to your snowstorm question. Um Delvin, I like cranky weather guy. He's good. Okay, he knows his stuff. Um, I, I I do uh, follow him on Twitter, and um, he's, he's he's very good. I, I I give him a lot of credit. Um, twenty below Celsius outside boxing. That seems like a bit of a push. Um, I I don't know that you know if you're talking about up in northern you know up in northern Scotland up in the mountains. Uh, 20 below Celsius is, uh, you know, pretty cold. Um, 20 degrees below average, uh, perhaps, maybe that's what you're telling me. And not 20 deg degrees below zero Celsius. Uh, but 20 degrees below average in some places wouldn't shock me at all. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to get, I want to get everybody's comment here. Yeah, you might be done in Virginia, Fabian. You know, yeah, you're going to, at this point, um, let's see. Uh, Connecticut got the worst roads in the nation. Well, I've driven on those Connecticut roads. I guess it depends on, on which roads you're talking about. Um, uh, Connecticut, especially inland, is uh, rather mountainous and quite beautiful, by the way, uh, if, if you've never been. Um, in the, I was up there in the fall and it was just absolutely uh, ama amazing. Uh, Reaver, consider teaching uh, at, at, Stony, at Stony Brook. You know what, buddy? I don't have the time. Um, I kind of like what I'm doing. I do my library appearances and I'm really enjoying those. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm good with that. Um, but... Uh, thank you, David Schwartz. I really appreciate that. Thank you for hitting Super Chat tonight. Um, <clears throat> let me just give you a, a formal thank you. Uh, been a long day, folks. Can we see the teleconnections? I kind of lost the graphic. Um, I had to describe them for you. Uh, who just asked that? I'm sorry. Whoever that was that uh, um, asked me about seeing the teleconnections. I, I, I somehow misplaced the graphic on my screen, but I will uh, have it back tomorrow. Um, I promise. Um, you know, Stephen White, I don't know if trees are, you know, I, who knows, you know, that's, let's wait to see what kind what we're dealing with at the end of this week before we start taking, you know, we're uh, started picking, targeting trees that are going to fall, but the ground is very wet. I will give you this. If it does get somewhat windy with the ground as saturated it is, as it is, would not shock me. Uh, yes, trees are going to be dancing during the storm, Shelly Man Studios. Thank you very much. Uh, I Wise asses are always good. I like that. Um, um, cranky Weather Guy is posting a lot, a lot to go through. Read his write-ups a lot. He's very good. I, I, I really do like him. I don't know if he watches, but if he is, you're very good, okay? Um, I, I mean that. Uh, many other states have bad roads, but VDDOT is the worst. Uh, difference between Maryland and Virginia was night and day after the blizzard of 16. You know, it depends, by the way, you know, some places uh, don't, you know, some places are very active in terms of road clearing while snow is falling and other places wait till the snow is all done before they send their crews out. So, I, you know, I guess it depends on count the counties you're in or, you know, what state you're in. Um, I know people in upstate New York know how to handle snow a lot better than people downstate. And I know the people downstate New York know how to handle snow a lot better than people, uh, than the folks that are down in, um, in Maryland and Virginia who know it better than people who live in South Carolina. So basically the rule is the further South you go, 
uh, the uh, less capable you become of uh, handling snow on the ground. I'm not sure how it is up in the UK, uh, but I bet you the same thing applies. The folks up in northern areas that get more snow know how to handle it a whole lot better than the folks that live um, to the south. And yes, Anthony, or the, the, the issue is the block is not far enough fast enough. It gets far enough south, but it doesn't get there until uh, after the, the nor'easter is already, the uh, primary low is already moved up into northern areas of the Ohio Valley. You, know, you need that, either you need the block to build in faster or you need the system in the west to come out slower. Or some combination of those two things. Um, let's see. So, Tom Adams, you're already looking at next winter and the three winters removed from the strong. Well, you know what? You might be, you may have a point there. I, I'll, I'll give you that. We will be three winters away, removed from that strong uh, El Nino. Um, you would think that the atmosphere would have redistributed all the heat by then if it hasn't already. Uh, it takes time. You know, the in that particular El Nino being so off the wall. Um, it's, it's probably taking longer for, it probably took longer for all of that to work its way through. Uh, but who knows? We'll see when we get there. I'm sure there'll be some curveballs along the way. Um, Southside Boxing pointing out that they don't handle it at all <laughs> in terms of snow up in, uh, uh, in England and Scotland. We know it's coming, but we still can't deal with it. Uh, you know what the beauty though, the Southside is about, um, um, uh, uh, about snow this time of year especially, it melts. And no, Tom Adams, I do not have thoughts about next winter. All I have thoughts about right now is this winter coming to the, a close so I can take a, a short vacation and go fishing, which I'm going to do in April with my uh, my buddies. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Joe had this Long Island has nine to ten. Yes, that's correct. Um, I am. Well, the last below normal he, uh, season here was. So it started with eight and nine. So it's nine out of the last ten winters as um, um, uh, nine of the last ten winters for me here on Long Island where I am have had above normal snowfall and not just above normal, way above normal snowfall. What is OFA? Um, what don't I read, Tom Adams? What is OFA? I'm sorry. If I, maybe I, I know it, uh, I'm, and it's just lost in my memory. Uh, yes, and low. I mean, unless I can't. Well, you're done with snowstorms in, Nor in Norfolk, Virginia. I would be shocked at this point if you guys to see something at this time time of year. You know, you start to get into March. I mean, you know, it would have to be an incredible setup for you to have it. So, don't worry. OK, and you know what? For you, especially, even if it does, it would be gone within 24 to 36. Oh, the old farmer's almanac, Timothy Veltman. Well, the only thing I will tell you is that I happen to know very well the person that puts together the forecast for the old farmer's almanac. And I will just leave it at that. OK, um, I and it's not me. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, remember, summer of 2012 was very hot, and the de the the, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, the d the d re echo. Yes, on yours. Which state is that, Stephen? Is that Pennsylvania? Um, I, I'm thinking. I'm trying to rack my brain on this. Uh, and yes, William Huber, going fishing for sure. Uh, I will revert one of these days. Schedule a trip to the the Ozarks. Okay. Uh, promise um let's see just gonna uh, just want to make sure i got all your questions here today and it seems like i did always smiling i hope you feel better and by the way and thank you for answering my questions here because i know you guys are under an amber alert which is uh just under the red alert and greater than yellow because of the snow uh up in england we were talking about that uh in the um in the conversation in the chat uh, before we went um, we went live, so um, hope you feel better and uh, be safe in whatever snowfall you get. And keep me keep us posted here um, with regards to that. I was I'm going to be really curious to see how this all plays out. It'll be a good measure for me um, with regards to the uh, <clears throat> how the models uh, perform on the European side. And actually, for me. Uh, it'll be a good measure of how I've performed since uh, I've been taught. We've been talking about this now for the better part of the week. So let's see what happens. Okay, we'll be watching weather models. 
uh, of course, uh, in the uh, overnight. And uh, we'll uh, be back on uh, tomorrow with all the latest, and we'll keep you up to date. We'll see what adventures tonight's models uh, bring uh, with regards to this system for the East Coast and also with um, the uh, snow and cold across uh, much of Europe and the snow that will be falling in uh, um, England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. And uh, you can also uh, you know, check out all the website posts on meteorologistjochaffee.com. And I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm probably not going to do a Facebook Live tonight, which, you know, a lot of times I say I'm going to do it and I don't. There are times where I don't say it and I do. Uh, but uh, we definitely will be back tomorrow uh, with the Joe Rayo, Joe Chaffee show on um, on Facebook. And uh, if we have both have time, um, maybe we'll do the YouTube live stream together. If not tomorrow, certainly as we get closer uh, to uh, whatever is going to happen here at the end of the week with regards to the uh, the storm along the East Coast. All right, folks, hope you had a great Sunday. Have a good week ahead, and we will uh, see you tomorrow.